Okay, we are now live now. You are in charge, Sahib. Surendraji, you are in charge. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yes, Sabko Namaste. We'll start with the chanting three ohms. Okay, please sit in a very comfortable position. Hands on your thighs, palms facing up, tip of the first finger touching the tip of the thumb. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. Oh. One more time, take a deep breath. Oh. Third time. Oh. Lord, you rub your palms. Palm your eyes. Let the eyes get energized from the heat of your palm. And once the eyes are energized, try to open them a little at a time. Once the eyes are fully open, get your hands onto the knees, arms facing up. So we are going to start today with uh, <clears throat> with breathing from the left nostril, and then we will breathe from the right nostril, <clears throat> in and out, and then whichever nostril is more open, we will breathe in through that. And we'll breathe out from the nostril that is a little bit less open. Okay. <clears throat> so close your right nostril with your right thumb. Breathe in from the left. Breathe out from the left. Breathe in from the left. Breathe out from the left. Breathe in from the left. Breathe out from the left. We'll do it four more times. One last time, breathe in through the left. Breathe out from the left. <clears throat> Take a couple of normal breaths. Now close your <clears throat> left nostril, either with the two middle fingers, or you can close the left nostril with the left thumb, whatever is more convenient for you. Now breathe in from the right. Breathe out from the right. 
breathe in from the right. Breathe out from the right. Breathe in from the right. Breathe out from the right. <clears throat> and four more times. You just take your <clears throat> hands onto the thighs, palms facing up. Take few normal breaths. <clears throat> so now, as you were breathing in from the left nostril and then through the right nostril, you will find that one nostril is a little bit more open than the other. So I want you to breathe in, in the next process, I want you to breathe in from the nostril that's more open and breathe out from the nostril that's less open. And we will repeat the same, okay? We'll do it seven times. I'll guide you through the first two or three, okay? So for example, my left nostril is more open today. <clears throat> so start the process, breathe in and breathe out from the opposite nostril. Breathe in through the first nostril. Breathe out through the opposite one. Breathe in through the first one. Breathe out from the opposite one. Breathe in through the more open one. Breathe out from the opposite one. Do it three more times. Next, we are going to <clears throat> practice Anulom Vilom. Anulom Vilom <clears throat> has many, many benefits. So the main benefit is it reduces the stress. And once the stress is reduced, it has many benefits on the different organs, on the nervous system, on the endocrine system, on your breathing system, or you can call respiratory system, on the circulatory system. And <clears throat> these four systems, they are extremely important because as we know, the lungs, the heart, the nervous system, and also the endocrine system, which includes the glands, endocrines are the glands. Glands are those little tiny things in our body that excrete certain hormones into our 
bloodstream directly. So as they do that, they have a very quick effect on the chemistry of the blood and that in turn changes the chemistry of the body. Okay. <clears throat> so for from unlongulum, we start by breathing in through the left and then we breathe out from the right and then breathing in from the right, breathing out from the left. That completes one cycle, okay? So we are <clears throat> going to practice it for three minutes in the beginning. So everyone, please, um, you can make a mudra, which is called the Vayu Mudra, which is the first finger at the root of the thumb. And then we use the two middle fingers for the left nostril and thumb for the right nostril. So close the right nostril with the right thumb. Breathe in through the left. Close the left, breathe out from the right. Breathe in through the right. and breathe out from the left. Breathe in left. Breathe out from the right. Breathe in from the right. Breathe out from the left. And continue.
I'm going to repeat one more cycle and then stop. A few normal breaths. Anyone has any question on Anulom Vilom? If you have a question, please raise your hand, zoom hand, or unmute yourself. A quick, uh, there is no question, Sahib. Okay. <clears throat> So, on Lom Lom Pranayam, there are, <clears throat> first of all, there are many pranayams which um, has some restrictions. For example, Kapalabhati Pranayam, if someone has a high blood pressure or heart problem, we don't let them practice that. We don't teach. And if we teach, we always tell them not to practice. They can just watch but not practice. And then there are other pranayams which have a restriction that there should be uh, no food in the stomach for at least two to two and a half hours before you practice any pranayam. However, anulom vilom is a very unique pranayam. First of all, it can be done by anybody healthy, unhealthy, sick, whatever condition a person is. Secondly, there should be at least one hour and 15 minutes instead of two and a half hours after you take the food, you can practice Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Anulom Vilom Pranayam is good mainly for stress relief, like I said. It's also good for diabetes. For diabetics, they should practice this pranayam as long as they can do. For example, they can do it 10 minutes in the morning, they can do it 20 minutes after two hours, another 20 minutes after two hours, two minutes after two hours. So whatever time you get in your life, Practice Anulom Vilom because this is good for the nervous system and the endocrine system, which deals with the whole body. And then there are some special reasons why we do the pranayam, this particular pranayam. Left nostril has a certain effect on the body, right nostril has a certain effect on the body. And then when we combine the two effects alternately, then the body has altogether a very balancing effect on our systems. So that's why we practice the Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Okay. So <clears throat> I would like to you to practice the Anulom Vilom Pranayam for three, four, three more minutes at your own, please. And I'm going to put the timer on for it.
And slowly stop and <clears throat> open your eyes. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> today, I would like to uh, give you a very basic principle of of breath the basic principle of breath is that our breathing out should be longer than breathing in what happens is in most people they breathe in and breathe out shorter than breathing in and nobody even knows that that's happening. Nobody knows it because we have not been told in most of the cases. And even if they know it, they don't practice it. And breath practice is very similar to swimming. You can learn a lot about swimming from the books, from somebody giving you the lecture. But if it is not practiced, you will not be able to internalize that particular knowledge. So generally what I prefer is that I do the live sessions for that particular purpose. However, since your <clears throat> program is set where we cannot interact or we cannot um, have it in person. So I will try my best to ask you, and it's up to you to follow that or not. Okay. Now, how do you start breathing longer than breathing in? Anybody who would like to, to venture the answer? Yes, it's something called uh, you close your you, you close your lips and then blow out slowly through the mouth. That slows down the breathing out. Mm -hmm. the name for it, I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. So instead of breathing out of the nose, you breathe out of the mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Is that what we do all day long? No, I don't, but that is the one process. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first principle also, along with the out breath being longer than the in breath, is that we should breathe majority of the time through our nostrils, not through the mouth. Okay. However, there are some special pranayams like you mentioned. We breathe out through the mouth, but very rarely, very rarely, there may be one pranayam out of the 15, 16 pranayams where you will be breathing in through the mouth. So breathing out through the mouth is one method, but how do you know that you are breathing longer? How do you know? You think that that's what happens. There has to be some measurement, right, Pradeepan? Most of the time, the time it takes to yeah. your lungs. So look into the time. So what we do is, I will give you a cue to breathe in for two or three counts, and then you breathe out for one count longer than whatever you're breathing in is, okay? <clears throat> and you practice that at least for three to five minutes a day. And then the time will come when you will be able to breathe out longer than breathing in. Again, if you stop the practice for a while, you will go back to the same thing because we've been practicing for many, many years, breathing out shorter than breathing in. So a very regular practice. Let's say I'm 20 years old today. I've been breathing like that for 20 years, breathing shorter, breathing out shorter than breathing in. So at least I have to give 20 more years to learn that. I'm just kidding. But if you practice every day, the body gets the message, the mind gets the message, and we breathe out longer than breathing in for most of the time, okay? So we'll start right now. So breathing in and breathing out, we learn by breathing through the nostrils, both the nostrils, okay? So we will try that. I will do start with two counts breathing in and three counts breathing out. And I generally count not one, two, I count 1,000, 2,000, and then I'll ask you to breathe out 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, okay? Good. <clears throat> so let's begin. Sit in a very comfortable position. It is better if you're sitting on the chair. Keep your feet hip bone distance apart. <clears throat> and your feet should be touching the floor totally. But if you're sitting on the floor, you can sit in one of the comfortable asanas, which is <clears throat> Sokhasana is one of them, just cross leg position. And you put both of your hands, arms facing up, and you touch the tip of the first finger with the tip of the thumb. Okay? So breathe in through both the nostrils. 1,000, 2,000. Breathe out. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Breathe in. 1,000, 2,000, breathe out, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Breathe in, 1,000, 2,000, breathe out, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now we'll <clears throat> increase the breathing in by one more count and see if we can do that. Breathe in, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Breathe out, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Breathe in, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Breathe out, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And continue.
continue, continue, please. And stop. <clears throat> Okay, would anyone like to make a comment as to what was their feeling while they were breathing out longer than breathing in? Anyone would like to share their comments? My comment is that on the last breathe out, it was harder because the air had already exhausted itself. So I think I had to start, start, start the slow breathe out. Mm -hmm. Compared to breathing in. And I'm not used to doing it, so it takes a while. Like, the do it, but you have to be conscious about it to do. Mm -hmm. So it's taking little effort from my part. So were you able to were you able to do it for three counts in and four counts out? Yeah, I could do up to six counts, but mm -hmm. after that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by six counts? How did like you I, I did up to 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. But while taking it out, I could up, go up to 6,000, not more. Mm -hmm. So four to, I thought the ratio would be two. So sh I should have gone up to eight, 8,000, but I couldn't. Was the, Am I correct or wrong? No, you are not wrong. You are not correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's lung is different. So on a very on a given day, your breath will be different. So mainly what you do is you practice. If you've been practicing, it looks like you've been practicing it. So the goal is to reach one to two. But that is not something you want to achieve. <clears throat> the more important part is. How do you breathe? That means you have to have control on how the breath is moving in and how the breath is moving out. I can do the count like this. One, two, three, four. And when I'm breathing out, I can say one, two, three, four, five, six. I was basically doing four and four but just to make my mind feel good, I counted till six. So the most important part is learning how to breathe in, okay? And I will show you in a minute. And then when you are breathing out, you have to keep the breathing out what is called continuous. And as you are, while you are counting in or counting out, the tendency is that we stop the breath in between. We have to learn the counting only for the purpose of training. Okay? So, four and six is great. Okay? However, I generally ask people to start with three and four. Three and four. Then four and five, four and five. As a matter of fact, when I go to four, many of the people, they cannot breathe up to four. I don't know, you ask people, they will have a difficulty breathing up to four. And then as Pradeep Bhai mentioned, okay, and I hope he will not mind my saying this, when, Somebody says that I ran out of breath going up to four. So that means that shows that they are breathing out faster than breathing in. Okay. That's why. So we have at that particular stage, we want to go back from three count breathing in and four count breathing out. We have to go back down to two count breathing in and three count breathing out so that we have a very good control. It's all about the continuation of breath. 
the breath has to be slow and continuous and rhythmic. Okay. <laughs> What I mean by rhythmic is, as somebody is singing, that tone doesn't change, it doesn't go up and down. Okay, So breath also has to move in very continuously and rhythmic and moving out very rhythmic and continuous. So it's not like, you know, that's one of the reasons that I do teach interactively and I do teach that I request people to keep their video on because even if you had not told me if I see you sitting in a on the floor or if I can see you the upper part of the body I can you don't have to tell me I can tell you who is breathing and how they are breathing okay because breath is a science so now, the other question, the other, not the question, but the other important part is that I mentioned the breath from the throat. Anybody remembers? Pradeep Bhai, remember we talked about it? Yeah, you mentioned the feeling the sound. Feeling like it, you are, as if you are snoring. Yes, so mild, mild slowly. Yeah. So <clears throat> to have a good control on the breath, you have to learn how to breathe through the throat, not all day long, just for the practice. Three minutes, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes every day. Okay. So anybody remembers what I mentioned? How do we get to this? Breathing from here. No, please tell us again. Okay. So <clears throat> it's a, there is inside, there are two chords, vocal chords in here. So what we do is as we, the vocal chords are always open like this. Okay. So what we do is we close the, on the bottom, there is, they are joined. On the top, joined in the sense means they are closer. Okay. And as we close the glottis, which is the, the distance between the two vocal cords, as we close it slightly, just paying attention to it, and we breathe in and out, then most of the breath will be felt here than through the nostril. And I mentioned that as you are breathing in, you just think of as if you are breathing in with the idea of the sound, silent sound of sa while breathing in and ha while breathing out. Okay, sa, just we have to just imagine while breathing in, sa, and while breathing out, ha. Only breathing in and out through the nostril, but just keep the two fingers right at the pit of the throat or just a little bit above. Okay. And relax your lips. Relax your neck and breathe in through both the nostrils and pay attention to where your two fingers are. Okay. Pridibai, could you feel it here? Not really. It's mostly tightening in the neck muscle is what happens. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay. You're supposed to do that or not? Tighten the neck, the neck muscles? No, you don't tighten the neck muscles. No. Okay. I thought you said the neck is tight. No, I wind up tightening it. No, you don't, you don't tighten the muscles outside. Okay. 
only inside the core. That's why you learn more about this breath as you are breathing out. As you are breathing out, you are relaxing the neck and you just think as if you are snoring. And if you feel, if you get that sound, the lips have to be closed. In a van, that's the key. Most of the people in the United States, they keep their lips open while they are breathing even through their nose, slightly open. And that does not allow them to take advantage of their full lungs. And our goal, especially as we grow in our age, you know, we have to keep the lungs in good health because after the age of 40, the lungs, they start shrinking. And it's only the proper pranayama practice which can keep the lungs open. It will still reduce, but instead of going from 100 to 80 or 75, it will stay close to 90 to 95. And 90 to 95 is pretty good. Excellent. Even 85 is good. But if you don't pay attention to the breath properly, then by the time we reach 65, 70, the lungs have already shrunk more than 10%. The lungs don't shrink. How many of you have seen the rubber band sitting in your somewhere? in your house and then you find it after about three years and it's the moment you touch it it just breaks right yes the lungs are no different than than the rubber they're very similar to that they expand and come back they expand and come back but what happens is as they expand and if you don't properly leave the band little at a time and have a control on it, then it goes like this, which the muscles don't like. And lungs are like a muscle. Okay? So my teachings are the basic teachings. You know? It's... Uh, I, I want... If I can just do... Uh, a service to myself, I would say I would like to teach everybody how to breathe. Once you learn how to breathe, then you can do the pranayama, no problem. Okay, so this is one of the key to first practice, learn and practice breathing in and out from the uh, throat, they call it. It's called ujjayi breath. Ujjayi means victorious means as the people who breathe, you know, kshatriyas, when they fight, they breathe through here. Okay? They, the people who speak a lot, they have to learn how to breathe in from here. Otherwise, their, their larynx, they get, wives start vibrating and they talk like this. So, but if we learn how to breathe through here, everyday practice, then it will not happen. So this is one of the key to learn breathing in from here. Sometimes if I get a chance and uh, Induji or Dibhai up Kavi in white current or in person, I will teach sometimes and, and you will understand more, but Zoom is better than you know, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, uh, <clears throat> so this is where we practice. There was one more formula that I said, Rudy Bhai, last time. How do you learn to breathe from here? Anybody remembers? Anybody was here? Don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> and there are two more methods, but I will just. Talk about one more method, okay? As you are breathing in, 
You close your lips, breathe in through both the nostrils, and silently think of so. So, hum. So, hum. No sound. Just you have to think about it. And I want you to do that for a for 30 seconds. Okay? First of all, also, Shilpaven, if I may also mention, whenever you are breathing in, make sure, think this is a table. My hand is a table, okay, under the chin. So if I have my neck above the table, it's not good for breathing. If your neck, you look into the mirror, keep a mirror in front of you and see if you are looking at the eye level. So if you, once you have this position, then you can take your neck just a touch down, like one or two degrees and breathe in and breathe out. If you do this, all these breath muscles, this is called the muscles of respiration. These muscles, they get tight. And once these muscles are tight, you cannot breathe properly in and out, okay? So this is the another principle that you have to remember. Then as you are <clears throat> breathing in, you breathe in with the sound, silent sound of so, Hum. Okay, just breathe in and out. So hum without the sound. And also with your mind, try to feel the breath at the pit of the throat or just a little bit above. And slowly open your eyes. <clears throat> if one wants to be a good meditator, they have to learn Ujjayi breath. Because people who breathe out without good control on their breath, they're, they will be having interruptions in their breath during the meditation. And the moment there is an interruption in the breath, then the meditation will get disturbed. The mind will get disturbed. Okay. So it's another important thing is you learn the Ujjayi breath or the victorious breath, what we call it, to meditate. And why do we learn pranayama? Why do we practice pranayama? Because pranayama is a gateway to meditation. Okay. So that's how your meditation will be perfected, okay? So any comments? Oh, we learned a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody yeah, else? Thank you, Surendra Ali. Let's watch the video again. Thank you, Surendra Ali. Who, who, is, who is talking? Somebody is talking in the back. I don't know. Thank you, Surendra Okay. I yeah. Okay. I okay, so we'll. I was doing with the breaks, so my was not happening good. now. No, I can't hear because too many. Yeah, now if somebody speaks, only one person can can have the uh, audio open, other than me. Okay. Can you hear now? Yeah. Uh, thank you. I learned uh, because uh, I was not breathing properly. I wasn't doing meditation properly. I realized that. So it is good to know. Thank you. So I'll pay attention to my breath. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. 
Anybody else like to make a comment? And then we will <clears throat> finish uh, the program today. This is Shilpa. Thank you so much. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Bhai, I was not, I just got the information this morning from Induji. I, yesterday I saw the email, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, WhatsApp, and I was not prepared. Uh, to teach today, so you yeah, have to no, 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 I also said it was a last minute change. Yeah, because I I normally prepare myself. If I teach for one hour, I prepare myself for one hour as to what exactly I'm going to pass on the knowledge that I have. So I apologize for not being. Uh, you, no, know. you did very well. No problem at all. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. So we'll do the closing prayer, which is Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Oh, may, may I, uh, I have to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems October 5 is the next. Uh, yeah. No classes up to October. October 5 is the next one for you. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I'm aware of that. Okay. And I'm very happy to. Come I just wanted everybody to know and get on the record. So. Whoever watches the video will know. Okay. So I will do the closing prayer now. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Patrani Pashyantu Mahakachit Dukkha Bhagavan Om Shanti 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 Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.